Hey Twinkle fans, in this video I'm going to share with you how I transformed this small classroom display board into an interactive and editable display to help teach time with key questions and challenges. And of course this wouldn't be a display board or bulletin board video without some top tips and hacks and new ways to personalise your display, which of course I found on social media. But this is also a Twinkle video, so I'll be sharing some top tips for using your Twinkle membership that you might not have heard of before. Hey there, I'm Holly and I used to be a primary school teacher but now I work at Twinkle making videos to make your teaching life easier. And because it's Twinkle, we help all those who teach. This is actually a whiteboard that I bought off Amazon but for the purpose of this video I'm transforming it into a display board. I know in some schools there's really tiny display boards which you don't really know what to do with them or how to use them so this is a great display for that. Also because this display is in my home office and I'm not currently teaching I don't have access to the wavy display borders that you get in a huge roll so I found this great hack of how to create a border on PowerPoint which actually is so easy it means you can actually insert an image or a pattern into the border and make it whatever you want it to be. Open PowerPoint, change the size of the slide to A4 paper if you're in the UK and insert this shape copy and paste and connect them. Then in the shape format tab, go up and click union. This magically makes it one shape and removes the outline in between, literally magic. Next, rather than filling it in with a color, insert an image. I've just used a dotty blue image, but I've seen teachers using hearts and rainbows and flags and really personalize it. I like a dark outline, then I copy paste it twice. So three fit on an A4 page quite nicely, that it's printable and a good size. Obviously I use a trimmer or a guillotine to trim as much as I can, but the only downside is that you have to cut the round shape yourself. Unless you're one of those lucky people that has one of those cry cut, cry -cut cricket, cricket cutty, cutty machine, machine devices. devices. You know what I'm talking about. I'm sure that would be so much quicker. I'm also a huge fan of not having the wavy display board. I know people use mesh or fake plants, or they make those big paper flowers out of tissue paper. Love it. But this is just a personalised paper alternative and of course Twinkle have lots of rectangular designs for all occasions and tastes so don't forget to check those out if a DIY wavy border is not for you. However, look at how satisfying it is when they're all cut and the way the corners join is just oh so satisfying. Next Twinkle teacher top tip, I love blue tack, white tack, sticky tack, whatever you want to call it. I know a lot of people, teachers especially on social media at the moment, are encouraging people to colour in their staple so it blends in with your display. It's a great tip. However, sticky tack is already hidden because it's under the paper. <gasps> it's also reusable, so it's a lot more environmentally friendly than staples. It's clean and easy to use. And if you drop them, it's not dangerous. How satisfying and cute is this little sticky tack cube I made? Bonus display hack. If you laminate your displays, then sticky tack doesn't ruin it, it doesn't put holes in it, and you can reuse your displays over and over again every year if you want to. So this is a Twinkle display banner. I've not edited it because, in my opinion, I just needed a visual with the word time and some images of where time is used. But top tip incoming, you can click the more downloads button when you're downloading Twinkle resources, and you'll see customer requests like this one, where someone has asked for it to say today's schedule, or even cursive ones. Another Twinkle Teacher top tip. You're welcome, by the way. You can request resources all the time, whatever resource you want. Our Twinkle Cares team and amazing designers will then get it made and sent to you ASAP. So next time you're planning at least a few days in advance, think about it. Also, just to reiterate, this is a small display board and I only wanted it to have the word time. So I actually printed it two to a page because display banners don't have to be massive and, and be on three A4 pages and take up most of the board. Anyway, my next display tip is to actually plan out your display before you put it on the board. Obviously using sticky tack helps with this anyway because I can move things around. But I like to plan the layout, take a photo and use it as reference. I find it really speeds things up, especially those displays with lots of tiny features like key questions or you've got word cards or small images or even sticky notes. Also, yes, this is my dining table, but even when I was teaching, I would cut out my displays and practice the layout, either on the coffee table or dining table. Okay, so this four times A4 clock face for display is the best. Not only is it huge, huge, so everyone can see it, but it's also designed so that when you print, you can overlap it and just line up the dots. Genius. So I plan to use some sticky notes on the left for key questions because of the location of my desk. I've got two different display cards. The small ones are from this display pack, while the bigger ones are time word cards. So I could have the smaller cards 
up on display first and use the bigger word cards on display as I teach each new five minute interval. These time word cards are amazing. They've got over 20,000 downloads. I've used them before as like a matching game. So you get the word card, cut the clock off of the word and then it's like pairs, simple. So the whole idea for this display board is to be interactive. I've made two little hands for the clocks, literally just quickly cut out two different length arrows on red paper so they stand out. And again, I'll be using sticky tacks so I can keep on moving them around. I had to check my practice layout photo for this. I forgot where I was meant to be putting this poster, which by the way, this is just a simple time display poster with some prompts like 60 seconds equals a minute, 24 hours equals a day, etc. And by the way, all the resources I've used are linked in the description. I love these handy little plastic wallets. I use them all the time teaching whether it was to store small bits, keep things on children's tables, hidden answers. But today it's used for my time word cards to keep them handy when I want to put them on my display after teaching about them. On to the backing paper. When I was teaching, I loved black backing paper. It meant that the wavy border stood out because they were always like neon or bright colors. It also meant that the kids work stood out because typically it's on white paper or it's painted. But actually I hate backing paper, I know. So controversial, but I said it. It's a pain to put on the display board. It rips so easily and you can't write on it. One school I worked at previously actually bought clear plastic for everyone to cover their display board so that you could write all over your display. Another school had massive sheets of sticky back plastic so you could put your backing paper on and then put the plastic on so then you could write on it. But this, this is special. This is contact paper or window film. You can get it in like Wilco's, B&Q, so many shops sell it. It comes in like a big roll like wallpaper. It's got these cool lines so that you can cut it like a guideline. And it's quite cheap. Typically people put it like inside drawers or they use it like to cover up their desk surface. Or I think I've actually seen TikToks where people cover up their kitchen surfaces with it. Yes, I've already made a TikTok on this, by the way. Check out Twinkle Resources on TikTok, please. It's full of top tips, great hacks, and lots of adult humor. Anyway, I use whiteboard pens on my display. It's a great way to display key questions that the kids will be seeing a lot this week. Plus it wipes off, win-win. I also add sticky notes full of key questions. This is helpful for if children finish their work early, I'd grab a sticky note and they could write out the question in their book as a challenge. Also good to have some questions ready in general. I also made a purple digital clock to show how a digital clock and time is represented but actually after teaching time for a week that probably wouldn't be so useful so I decided to draw one on in whiteboard pens. It's good to have more places to write stuff for kids to see like questions and converting time from analog to digital which is another reason this contact paper window film stuff is so great. Um, so yeah this is the finished display you can see I added more questions and sentences that can be completed to show mastery understanding. You can also see that I added um, some writing to my clock hands just short and long hands an hour and minutes plus a converting time question that can easily be edited. You should also see bunting, which is Twinkle's 10 to 120 in tens number display bunting. I thought this would be helpful for the kids who still aren't too confident with their 10 timetables, plus helpful when asking questions like what time will it be in half an hour? My final display hack for you today is to help you cut out display lettering. Cry cut, cricket. I've seen so many shorts, reels and TikToks on using them to cut out display letters, which is brilliant if you have one. I don't, but I do use a utility knife, Stanley knife, you know the ones. It's just really helpful to cut the center out of the letters because I hate when you have to fold the letter, you get the crease. Please be careful though, they are sharp and dangerous and should be kept out of the reach of children. Plus there are top tips everywhere on social media for display lettering. I've seen lots of people using uh, painter's tape, you know, you lay it out on the floor, you put your painter's tape on, then you hold it up and then you can easily put your letters up. Personally, I just put the middle letter in first. Plus, remember display boards are for kids. They don't care if it's symmetrical, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once you've got the right balance of a not too cluttered display board, but also creating an engaging learning space, it should give your students a happy place to be and encourage them to enjoy their learning, which is ultimately what we all want. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with your teacher friends. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more of our future videos. And as always, thank you for watching.